Hi, it's Jason here at Fraser Valley Rose Farm on a very wet day. And I want to talk to you about moisture, humidity, and its effects on growing plants. It's not something you can really control as much on the outdoor environment, but indoors is where I'm doing a lot of my growing right now. Late winter, I'm starting a lot of seedlings, I'm starting a lot of cuttings, and a lot of people do grow plants indoors either year round or gear it up during this time of year in preparation for spring. Let's talk about how humidity, and particularly too high humidity, can actually harm your plants. Let's go. Well, let me first say that water has some really funny properties when you pay attention to it. One thing is that it's quite sticky and you wouldn't think of water as being sticky like glue, but it kind of is or in a different way. Like for instance, if you threw a bead of water on a surface and it holds together like that, why doesn't it just fall away? That is stickiness. That's called cohesion. Or if you threw it against a window and it stuck to that surface, that would be called adhesion. Plants use the stickiness of water all the time when they use capillary action to pull the water up their stems in one long stream where it hits the leaves and then it evaporates into the air. Water on a surface of a plant or on any surface will want to basically evaporate into the air to a certain proportion based on the temperature and that is humidity. Plants rely on this very process of pulling moisture up from the soil into their tissues and it evaporating into the air. They are themselves, in fact, humidity machines. This is the process they rely on to bring up all their water and nutrients for the growth of the plant. So it should be no surprise then that plants all put together in a same place in an enclosed environment all doing that transpiration process, putting moisture into the air, will soon make it so that the air starts to run out of room. And that's what you have when you have a high relative humidity. Let's put that into numbers actually. And here's a humidity monitor that I have in the room here. This sensor shows it at 73%. It even has a little sad face beside it to show me that that is not optimal levels for growing plants. What is optimal levels? Well. Here you go, I'll put it up right now. For seedlings, young seedlings, it might be between 60 and 70%. That might be about the best range for young seedlings. Once you get past the young seedlings though, you're trying to push that humidity level down. And in general, the further you go into the growing cycle, the lower that humidity goes. Usually for plants that are sort of just in the growing on vegetative stage, you'd want to see this humidity level down in the range of 40 to 60%. That really helps them to take up that moisture from the soil and transpire. It helps them to move through the nutrients. You'll have healthier plants. You'll also have less disease. We'll talk about that in a minute. If you're looking at uh, even cannabis growers, I'll let you know, actually sometimes even push that humidity down below 40% in late stages of flowering, try to reduce rot and try to improve their overall yields. So the deeper you go into the growing cycle, typically the lower, but for young seedlings, 60 to 70%, and for most plants in the vegetative stage, somewhere between 40 and 60% indoors. Now, wait a second, where I am here, starting up my seedlings, you'll see on the controller down on the floor there that it's showing 25 degrees Celsius, but also 83% uh, percent relative humidity. Well, the reason for that, the reason why it works in the sense of starting seedlings, and you'll see elsewhere where I have cuttings under humidity domes, is because those are plants before they have roots and before they're relying on that transpiration to move their nutrients. So for basically early propagation, starting seeds, starting cuttings, you can have a higher level of humidity up to the point where you even see that condensation developing on the inside of the humidity dome, but later on the plants do not benefit from it. So what kinds of problems could you run into if you've had too much humidity in an enclosed room like this? And actually I've had some trouble managing humidity levels in this room here, and so I can show you some minor examples of the kind of damage you might expect to see. First one here, and I hope you'll be able to see the pattern, I'll get you a separate shot if you can't, is that there are plants that are living on the outside of the tray, but the ones in the center are gone, dead. They actually rotted in the tray. Uh, one of the things about having too high humidity is that the plants can't push that moisture so easily into the air, so it sits in the soil much longer than it should. In combination with a heavier potting medium than I should have used, uh, it ended up rotting the ones in the center, where the ones on the outside are doing far better. So that's number one. You can end up with root rot because your soil holds too much moisture. 
A second problem, and the second tray I'll show you here, is exhibiting what looks like a nutritional deficiency. It looks like the plants are uh, chlorotic or have uh, intravenal chlorosis, meaning it's green at the vein and yellow on the rest of the leaf. And you might assume at first, well, that's because I gave it too little nutrients. Actually, the nutrient levels are fine. I've tested those, I've formulated those by a well-proven formula I've used. What the problem is, is that because those humidity levels were so high, the plant has a hard time pulling up that moisture, pulling up those nutrients and transpiring moisture into the room. Uh, if the roots rot because it's not pulling up moisture, that can also present as a nutritional deficiency. But in this case, it just wasn't moving the moisture and therefore it was running out of nutrients. Um, so I'll show you some close-ups of that. A third common symptom is where you'll see what looks like burnt tips of the plants, like the very ends of the leaves or the edges of the leaves turning brown and desiccating. And on these ones here, I'll get you a close up of those as well. Once again, it's a matter of the plant is trying to push moisture out, but its moisture is sort of holding on the edges of the leaves and kind of rotting the edges of the leaves. So it just can't go through it. Also, once again, if you see root rot because of lack of transpiration, you will often see the plants have unhealthy roots and burnt tips of the leaves. Also, those same nutritional uh, appearing deficiencies. And finally, I will just say that although I don't see signs of it in here right now, that high levels of humidity make your plants more vulnerable in general to things like mildew, powdery mildew, downy mildew, all sorts of foliar diseases uh, can uh, attack your leaves when they're surrounded by so much moisture. So I'm an experienced grower. How did I end up in a situation where I had too much humidity in my grow room? Well, the answer is we had a warmer and wetter winter than normal. And when you pack a lot of plants into a room like this, and then you seal it up trying to keep the heat in, what you'll end up with is some runaway uh, humidity increases. So that's what I ended up with here and I've had to pay attention to it. So I'm making some changes here and I'm gonna start with some of the most basic changes. One thing I'll be doing is I'll be putting in a vent like this between the rooms uh, just to allow this air to exchange a little bit with the other air in the house, which is much less humid uh, because of the heating that goes on in there. I may also end up putting in some intake vents into the side wall here to bring some of the uh, less humid air from and allow a flow of air through the room. Now, what you'll find in larger greenhouses, uh, their solution to humidity is that they actually turn on the heat and vent. So basically they push up the temperature inside the greenhouse so it picks up more of that moisture and then it pushes it out through the roof vents, which can sound very wasteful, but if it's a choice between that and losing your crops due to high humidity, it probably makes more sense. As for the right now and until I get those vents installed, I'm back on the manual system where I open up the door to the room and exchange air with the rest of the house with a fan there to help de-stratify that humid air around the plants. I don't love that I have to do it manually, but that is indeed enough to push the humidity in the right direction. The other thing I should say is that every time I water those plants, every time I spray my cuttings, or every time I even bring cuttings in from outdoors uh, and they're all wet, or I bring in my wet jacket from outdoors, I'm introducing more moisture to this room and I have to be more vigilant after that point about the humidity. When it comes to that watering, you really should pay attention to the general guidelines is you shouldn't be watering to keep the soil wet all the time, especially that surface soil being wet after a watering. If I did the whole room at once, I'll be struggling with humidity in this room for a couple of days. So if I just manage to do it a few trays at a time and reduce the amount of plants that I have available inside this room or have sitting inside this room, uh, I know the temptation is to pack in as many plants as you can, but it does compound those issues with humidity. All right, that's everything I had to say on the topic of controlling humidity in your indoor grow room or in your greenhouse. I can imagine some people with the opposite problem saying, yeah, I have indoor house plants, just a few, and I need to bump up the humidity around them by adding moss poles or a humidifier. Totally get it. Anything you have to do to bring the humidity up to that 40% level or down to that 60% level. So that range 40 to 60% is typically optimum for indoor growing conditions. I will say one other thing, if you haven't paid any attention to this topic at all up to this point, 
You should get yourself an inexpensive humidity monitor of any sort. There's tons of them out there. They tend to be cheap and reliable. And if you can just start watching those uh, humidity levels in your indoor growing conditions, it will instruct you on some of the problems that you may be observing in your plants already. All right, that's all I had to say on the topic. If you have any questions, please drop those down in the comments below the video. I'll see what I can do to help.